what's up guys so we are going to do a reaction actually we're gonna go back in time when was this video made it was made six years ago five years ago so this was before covid so we're gonna go back in time the uh bbc made a video called how obedient are we it's a social experiment where this lady just goes out and starts uh acting like authority and telling people to do certain things. Now, I'm, I, I'm assuming this is in London. So I, I want let's watch this. And we're going to go back in time before COVID, before everybody's brains broke. And we're going to see how people were. I'm going to assume the role of an authority figure. Got my serious jacket on, my heels, Ivers jacket, clipboard. Will people be more likely to take orders from me in my uniform or in my normal clothes? Give me your most authoritarian face. <laughs> Give me your most authoritarian face. Is that Hillary Clinton right here? Bro, that's Hillary Clinton. <laughs> oh, you can't step on that. I'm sorry. You cannot step on this um, this area. Why not? It's not allowed at the moment. I'm sorry. And the reason why? Oh, I'd better get off there quickly if I were you. <laughs> You can walk on the black line, that'd be great. What the Because we're keeping it free. Oh, Thank you. Free. Yeah, Thank that would be great. Hi, I'm sorry, we've got no standing policy on the bridge. Really? Yeah. No standing? No, so you've got to keep walking. <coughs> That's okay. Yeah, got to keep walking, thanks. Yeah. Sorry, sir. The guy was like, looking at her like, he, he knew it was bull but he's looking at her like, and then smiling. I don't know if he ever ended up leaving or whatever, but I just, I, I imagine her trying to tell somebody in New York, hey, you can't stand there on that bridge. You can't stand on the bridge. Imagine that. It doesn't matter if it's a redneck. doesn't matter if it's, you know, somebody from the hood. It doesn't matter who it is, bro. You, they're going to cuss you out, okay? And you can just tell how different people are in London, man. How more, they're just so much. Sir, we have a no standing policy Let's see. on the bridge. Oh, actually, yeah. No problem, thank you. So no she just told that guy, you no know, standing on the bridge, and he's like, oh, I was just looking. Like, it's the people are just so different. Hold man. on to the bridge, that's it. Okay, not gonna die. Yeah, it's just safety measure. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. I'll help you along. Thanks, Thanks very much. There was definitely more of an authority when I was wearing my high vis. A high vis is a powerful jacket. You can't stand here at the moment. If you might moving to the side, that would be great. Yeah. Sorry, you can't stand here. We have people who have to be moving. Yeah, yeah, that's all right. Thank that's you very right. much. Great. Sorry, we can't have prams go through the main area. If you just don't mind going down the side. Yeah. We have a very strict backpack policy here. If you can just hold it in your hand, that would be great. Right. Wow. So she just tells a bunch of random young people, oh, you can't wear your backpack. You have to hold it in your hands. And they immediately take it off and just start holding it. This is crazy, bro. It really makes me see people hold a lot differently you know you know living in the u.s we don't comply very easily i remember when i was young i used to get arrested a lot and I, there was times when i didn't comply and i'd get beat up and i'd get thrown in jail while i was in jail i'm like oh, i'm only doing a couple months or i'm doing there was a time i did three years but even that was a small bit compared to a lot of the other people and i remember thinking just comply just get through this shit, get free again there's you know just do your do your sentence not a big deal but there was people i met that would not comply even if it was something so simple like there's so many like gangsters from atlanta that they would get locked up and it's like dude just listen it's not that big of a deal the co told you to do something it's so simple don't make a big deal out of it and even the smallest things like like uh tie your shoes like something stupid they would not listen if it was coming from an authority figure, they were like, F you, I'm willing to riot over this. And I remember thinking like how, in, in a lot of people, like Democrats especially, they they um, they um think all the, the ones that are willing to fight back against authority are just like rednecks with that love their guns and stuff. It's, it's everybody, man, except for like super snowflakey, woke liberal people. They are so, they're complete cucks for the, for authority. But um, they're probably the only people in this country that are complete cucks for authority. And COVID showed us that, by the way. You would think liberals like were the ones that were against authority, but 
I guess guess that's a whole different we saw we see them a whole differently over the last couple of years but I, I remember thinking like they just don't like authority and that is the beautiful thing about the US um, and then I'm looking at people I'm guess I'm assuming this is London but uh or somewhere in the UK it, people are just so much different man you tell them like anything they just uh, they're just obedient like okay and they don't even know who this person is they don't know what the situation is the, I'll tell you what if somebody came up to me and was like, "Hey, you can't stand here," the only uh, the the only reason I would listen to them is if there was like a threat in the area, if there was like a bomb threat, let's say, and I had my family, I'd be like, "Okay, I don't care if this if they're pranking me right now. I don't care. I don't care what the reason is. Just for you know, just to be safe, I will move everybody out of the way. I will stay skeptical. But if it's something like life or death." Yeah, whatever. But if it's like, take your backpack off, you have to hold it, you can f*** off. But I guess these people have been conditioned to uh, bow down to authority. Let me see if it isn't where it is exactly. It's BBC, so it has to, it's, it has to be somewhere over there. Okay, let's go ahead and get back into it. Put the backpacks it. off before you oh, go. Okay. What about this one? This one? No. You have to carry them? <laughs> yes, you just have to pick them up. Are you with a friend? No. Oh, there's two of them. Do you mind picking one up just... You just pick one of them up. I it's can't fine. pick them up. They're like 15 kg. You can pick up 15 kg. Okay. So which is the new dog-free zone then? Just, just down there. It'll be good. Okay. I'm just gonna walk this way then. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. There's a more sinister side wow. to this. Some people argue that unquestioning obedience to authority is the part of our nature that allows police states to flourish. In his now famous experiment from the 60s, Stanley Milgram got a shocking result. Some people, when given orders by an authority, are willing to go as far as seriously hurting or killing someone, just because they're told to do so. Yeah. Sorry, you've got to walk in line, just going past here. Thank you very much. Yeah, great. <laughs> Sorry, girls. It's funny because, you know, they did an experiment to see uh, how obedient people are and, and remember mind you guys this is before covid this is when rage against the machine was still rage against the machine and green day still was punk rock and and you know uh who else was it dropkick murphy's there were so many punk rock rockers that i've known for decades that my that i had people in punk rock friends of mine that loved them throughout high school and stuff COVID hit and all of a sudden all these punk rockers were that were so against authority were literally sucking the dicks of the pharmaceutical companies and the in, in government they wanted the FBI to censor people that they didn't agree with they became literally the thing that they've been talking about for decades okay so this this video was made before before COVID and it's interesting to watch how people were like how obedient is everybody well we found out we found out how obedient everybody was COVID hit people I thought uh, were against big pharma and big corporation big government they became cucks for them uh, I know people in my personal life I don't talk to anymore because I've always been skeptical I, I've always known the what goes on and what happens maybe it's because I was a prisoner for three years and um and I and I had that authority over me and I was treated like a, a lesser human or, or a, an animal and you couldn't do simple things like look at a girl or be around a girl or if, if a girl walks down the hallway you have to face the wall uh, and you have to like fight over ramen noodles and, and worry about getting stabbed it's like it's crazy so maybe that's why I always had I already I always knew what could happen if you give somebody too much power over you but uh, some people man they used to claim it and then COVID came and broke their heads and then the vaccine came and this is the craziness of it. I knew Biden voters when the vaccine first came out, it was Trump that was in office. He was the one that rolled it out with Operation Warp Speed. He said it's safe and effective. Everybody kept saying that and I remember thinking at the time, I was like, how could you guys know if it's safe and effective? Just use your f***ing brains. You don't have to be a scientist. How could you possibly know that? Anybody? Seriously, guys, how could you know it's safe and effective? They said it was 99, 97% effective. Okay, how could you know that? It's a new thing. It was the mRNA thing was made for cancer, what, a decade plus ago? It was shelved because it, the FDA wouldn't pass it. COVID comes out, which is a new novel virus, okay, and comes out. Nobody knows what to do. They're like, hey, we have this technology sitting on the shelf. 
it's safe and effective for COVID-19. How could you know that? It's impossible to know. So, so you roll it out and the same, and then Biden takes office and the same people that was saying, I will not take it if I will not take Trump's vaccine. All of a sudden, Biden comes into office and those same people are like, if you don't take the vaccine, you're a murderer. If you don't listen to the government, if you don't stay at home, if you don't stay six feet apart, like all these people, their brains just broke, man. It was the, and it's still, some of them, their brains are still broken. So when I saw this video, I was like, and it was five years ago, it was before COVID, 2017. I was like, wow, you know, these countries here, you know, like this guy right here, she said, you can't stand here. He doesn't even ask why. He goes, okay, holy no wonder why a lot of these countries were all about the vax mandate. No wonder why they were talking shit about, they're, they're always talking shit about oh, the US and their second amendment and their free speech. No wonder why they're so willing to give up all of everything. They're, they're conditioned. They... And then COVID showed us what countries are police states. Australia, people were getting guns put in their face from the government for being on the beach. Imagine that you're on the beach. Uh, you don't think COVID's a threat to you. you go on the beach because you're sick of being isolated with your kids. And you have some police with rifles. And by the way, you're not allowed to have those rifles. Only the government can. And they put it in your face to tell you to put your mask on and get off the beach. Go isolate yourself somewhere. Amazing, right? And we saw that with a lot of these countries, man. They had camps in Australia. And uh, they sit there and they talk crap. Oh, well, the U.S. has uh, gun deaths all the time. Yeah, 60% of them are, are suicides. And then, you know, out of 350 million, there might be 20,000 that are like actual homicides. And a lot of the, most of those are gang related. So you're going to say that nobody gets murdered in other countries because gun violence is all over the place in uh venezuela has the population of california like the state of california is the size of the entire country of venezuela and they are third in the world for most gun deaths they have no rights they have no currency they have nothing there dude it's a third world country it's just funny how like you hear these people that hey don't wear your backpack you have to hold it while walking on this strip okay ma'am who i don't even know who you are you're just wearing a green vest i'll listen to you and those same people talk crap about the americans who are gun loving freedom loving people it's just interesting to me i saw this video and that's what i thought about man figured i'd share it with you guys i hope you enjoy that uh, be sure to like the video and uh, subscribe to the channel and i will catch you guys next time